Hello Jackal, in this short video I'll show you how to take an image with a bunch of text, like the one you see now, and put it on top of another image or maybe video, but remove the background of this image and just have the text. As you can see this image already has the texture of the image in this case below it. I just use the shadow to display it. So if I go to the inspector tab and disable the drop shadow, you would not be able to tell that this text was originally not part of this image. So how you will achieve that? Well first you will need some content, in this case I have this image and I will just zoom in so it fills the whole screen and we have some space on the right side to put in the text. So I have this image, as you can see this is totally different than what the end result can look like. So I will position the image to the right, we can also rotate it, maybe zoom in. And the first thing that you may want to do is just go over the composite modes and see if a composite mode will work for you. Now which one will work for you will depend on the image that you use and also the background of the video or the image that you have. So in this case I think pin light is kind of okay, but we lose a lot of the text as you can see. But if that is what you wanted, then just using the pin light in this case would be okay. But if that is not okay and you want to get a result like this one, so we have all of the text visible, we will go to the color page, we don't need to use any LUTs, the only thing that I've done is I've adjusted the contrast, so in this case you would go from between 1.1 and maybe 1.2, the higher you go with the contrast, you will only be left with black and white, so if I lower it, anything that is not completely black will be visible faintly. So we'll also have this blemish here, we'll see how that goes. So currently the contrast is at 1.2. So let's go back to the edit page and now we'll simply adjust the composite mode. But if I select the pin light, which was the best in previous example, as you can see it's not the best. So if we go over the composite modes, we should find one that works the best. So in this case we have darken and darker color. So choose a composite mode that works the best for you and maybe I'll go back to the color page, zoom in and we can now adjust the contrast just so we can see what we're bringing back or maybe removing. So as you can see at this point we still have something visible so 1.1 we still have the paper visible from the original image, so maybe 1.2 was just good enough in this case. Now what you can also do, if you want to change the color of the tint, so it blends in a little bit better, you can go to the shadows in this example, and we can increase or decrease the exposure, and you can then also change the color of the shadow itself to change the tint. Now for the animations you can also make something like this. So this first one was basically my flip page transition, which I do have a tutorial on how to make it. So it's this transition. So let me show you how that looks like. So it can look something like that and you'll also be able to change the direction of the animation. So in this case I went from top to bottom, something like that. And as you can see I also have some shadow blur applied. So to match the transition from this one to the next one, I've also added the drop shadow 
to this one in the effects and only adjusted the blur size and the shadow strength was set to 1. If this is disabled, the transition would look bad. And the next one that you can have, so this is the same that I've shown you in the beginning with only the pin light enabled. And this is what you can get at the end if you simply animate the crop value from the bottom, the top or the left to right. In this case, I've animated the bottom value. And that's it for this video. If you found it helpful, subscribe to the channel to get more DaVinci Resolve content. I'm Simon, and until next time, Jackals, keep it digital.